Hey everybody, this is Indie Geek, and today I'm taking a look at Xenoraptor. This is a new game on Steam Early Access. It is available for PC and Linux, and it is $15, I believe. It's a little bit on sale right now, so uh, you know I would encourage you to go check out the link in the description to purchase it while it is still got a bit of a discount. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump in and play a couple of campaign levels. As you can see, there's quite a bit going on here. I've played the first three or so levels. And the nice thing is, the levels are pretty expansive, and like you don't have to fully complete a level to move on. So, uh, this is just the single player campaign stuff. I will explain what's going on here as we play. Um, to kind of finish up that thought real quickly though, basically what happens is this is like a, a twin stick shooter, and as with most twin stick shooters, it moves in waves. Uh, you only have to beat, I think, five waves to actually unlock the next segment. But each planet, or each kind of section of the game, has much more than five waves. I, I haven't actually made it through like a full set of waves, so I'm not sure if they just keep going forever. But I think the most I've made it to is like wave 11 or 12 of something, and it seems like it was going to keep going for a while beyond that. So that's kind of cool is that you can go back and still get some value out of these earlier levels as you get better. So uh, as far as like the gameplay goes, like I said, it's you know it is a, a twin stick shooter, and there isn't as far as like the the core gameplay here, there isn't anything too like out of the blue or anything like out of out of the box maybe um, that that would come as like an unexpected kind of thing for the game, I guess. Uh, where the unexpected stuff comes is actually outside of the core gameplay, and I will show that off a little bit um, after we die. Because basically what happens is uh, there's a boss after like every four waves, I think, so every like fifth wave, I believe, is a boss, if I'm remembering correctly. Each time you kill a boss, you get like a new part. With those parts, you can basically customize your weapons to pretty crazy lengths. I've only got a couple of customized, like uh, a, cus a couple of options for customizing right now, but like the other options are just grayed out so you can see like how much customization there will be. And considering we've got three weapons and each of those weapons have like extra customizable things about them, like extra qualities, things like that, there's actually a pretty expansive customization system here. To really kind of build your ship in, in the best way possible for kind of your style, I guess. Alright, so yeah, here is our first boss. Uh, you will now see me use some missiles. I typically have like too good to use syndrome with the missiles and I kind of save them for the boss, but that seems to be about the best way to handle that. Easy enough. So you see that I, that I unlocked a flat cannon. So even though I've already beaten this boss, I was able to unlock another weapon. Or it might have, I mean, it might have been a different boss, I'm not totally sure how that works, but I've definitely gotten past wave 5 here, and I still got a new weapon, so that's cool. It, it kind of keeps everything fresh, and really gives you reasons to kind of keep playing these levels over and over. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, I've only played a few levels, but this will definitely be one that I that I play some more of and see what happens as we go further. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that kind of explains sort of the customization system. I will explain a little bit more of that when we die. I will go show off how that works. Uh, other things about the game, um, as far as like the gameplay goes, you can see down there on the bottom left, you see the map, which is extremely helpful because you can see not only where enemies are, but where power-ups and things are. Next to that, you see my missile counts. So if I shoot, that use two missiles, and then I've got I can have up to 29 reserves. Um, the reserve counts, I believe, are different for different types of weapons, right? Because that's like your your explosive weapon, I guess we could call it. I don't remember quite what the the game calls it. I kind of refer to it as my explosive weapon. My options right now are like that and bombs. Uh, you're seeing me shoot my, my machine gun type primary weapon. I've also got 
that as a secondary weapon, which is kind of like a crazy sniper shot, sort of, which does like a ton of damage, but it has a pretty um, long recharge time, stuff like that. So I kind of save it for bigger ships while I use the machine gun to take out the smaller ships. Uh, under my missile counts you can see the coolant bar. So right now I'm in the blue because I've been collecting a bunch of extra coolant. And that's good because it means that then you've got longer to go until you overheat. Uh, certain enemies drop coolant, which are the yellow pickups that you see me pick up sometimes. And they'll say coolant when you go over them. So. You know, you're never really left like wondering what's what, because everything um, tells you what it is. You know, and kind of, uh, it reminds me a little bit of, well, actually a lot of this game reminds me of uh, Super Stardust on the uh, PlayStation 3. I think there's also been like PSP and PS Vita versions of it, all kinds of stuff. But yeah, it reminds me of that kind of game a lot. Um, in Know, the way things are handled, as well as like aesthetics, uh, it looks a little bit like those games, which I think is a good thing because those games look really nice. But yeah, you're you're definitely never like confused about what it is you're picking up, and I think that's a pretty strong quality. Oh, okay, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's only ten rounds. Okay, um, actually, I should go back to the main menu quickly. So there is multiplayer. I believe it's co-op. Uh, I haven't had a chance to dig into any of that, but that's alright. So yeah, we can go to our weapon one here, and you now see that I've got like four different things unlocked. So I think I'm going to keep the chain gun, but I might change my secondary weapon. Let me check out this flat cannon. Ooh, that seems really good. So then beyond that, you can change the barrel to be standard or heavy change the shells. I don't have any any others right now, but then we've got special weapons, which are like our missiles that we've been using, which have different guiding systems, different sizes, different warheads. Um, whoa, that's pretty wild. Maybe I'll try that out. We can change our sensors, we can change our hull. Like, it, honestly, there's just like a ton of, of different ships you could make here, and I think that is a pretty strong quality in the game, because... Oh, okay, so yeah, now we get a little golden thing because we've beaten all ten waves. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. So, you know, you can definitely, like, kind of cater the game, I guess, to the way that you want to play a uh, twin-stick shooter. And I think that's a really smart way of doing it. Obviously, like, it's, it's a lot of extra work on the dev, but seriously, like, props for putting all that in there because... Most twin stick shooters, like if I've got a problem with the game, it's because I don't like the ship options. But because this is so customizable, like, that's basically impossible to happen. Because if I don't like the ship option, I just unlock some new parts and then I can build it into something that I like more. So, you know, that I think is a really, really strong aspect of this game in particular. Alright, uh, you know, beyond that, I mean, the game is just plain fun. Um, you know, I mentioned a little bit about aesthetics. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned the Super Stardust vibe to it, and I think that that stands true. Um, you know, I think everything's pretty crisp. I think the biggest danger with a twin-stick shooter is that it can be... Um, you know, you can get to the point where there's just too much going on on the screen, and it's hard to, you know, like, focus on things you need to focus on. And I think, you know, just simple things like having the map there, having the words that tell you what each thing does when you pick it up, simple things like that really kind of help prevent that from being a problem. Um, beyond that, uh, I think from sound perspective, it's really, really good as well. It's got a pretty nice kind of uh, music track going on. Um, it, you know, I, I think it's, it's like, I think there's music. <laughs> I, I feel bad saying that. Uh, I know there's music in the menus. I honestly don't know if it, it sounds like it's, it's pretty faint. I know I turned it down a little bit. Yeah, there's definitely music going on there. 
so maybe we'll, we'll do this for a minute so we can hear it a little better. Um, you know, as with most twin stick shooters, like, the music is going to get lost a little bit just because there's so much going on um, volume-wise from other stuff. But yeah, I think it's a pretty good soundtrack. Um, it, it's weird. A lot of times, if I, if I don't actually notice the music, I kind of consider that a plus in a game like this because that means it's doing what it should do. It's just kind of there in the background, and I think that's, you know, I hope that's not like offensive to whoever made the music, but to me that, that feels like a plus because there's so much going on that it's really easy to get like sensory overload with a game like this. So I think the fact that the music isn't like super prominent helps. Uh, you know, it just makes for, for kind of like a nice accentuation to the, kind of the rest of the action that's going on. So yeah, I'd say I'd say props on the sound design. I think all the weapons and stuff sound pretty good. Um, you know, sound pretty satisfying, I guess. I, I don't want to say a lot. Like I don't really like using satisfying as, as a description for stuff like this, but I think that's true. Uh, you know, I think it, it does feel pretty satisfying in this case. All right getting to see some of the crazy drill missiles do their thing. Okay, cool. So there's that. Um, as far as scoring works, it's also pretty similar to Super Stardust as well. I honestly would not be surprised to find out that Super Stardust was maybe an influence on this. Um, of course, this is a scoring system that's used in a lot of games like this. Like, the more enemies you kill in a row, the more your multiplier builds. Um, not killing enemies for a prolonged period of time means that your multiplier goes down. That's all there is to it. Pretty simple, pretty easy to just kind of jump in and understand. Um, I guess if you've played Geometry Wars even, like, you understand that. It's pretty basic um, and kind of like quick to understand system that I think everyone probably knows by now. I guess the one thing I, I don't like is sometimes I find that my multiplier goes down in between waves as I'm waiting. Um, and then of course if you get hit, it goes back down to nothing. So that's how that works. Uh, obviously there are leaderboards, we saw a little bit of that. And people are already pretty good at it, even though it's only been out for a couple of days. Which never really surprises me. People seem to be really good at getting good at games fast. I'm not so much. I, uh, I definitely take time <laughs> if I'm going to get good at anything like this. But I think um, from a difficulty standpoint, this one is pretty good as well. I haven't found things too difficult. And I think, like I, like I was saying, having the way that kind of the level unlock system works, I think is, is a big sort of uh, advantage in that regard because I have found that I have been able to progress, even though I haven't necessarily been able to beat all 10 waves of a level. And that's good because, one, it doesn't block my progress, but also it gives me some incentive to actually go back later. So rather than having, like, just three difficulty levels, instead, uh, you know, it's kind of built around, like, if you can get halfway through this level, you can move on. But you also know that there's more to it. So if you want to come back, there's kind of an extra challenge for you. And, uh, you know, I think that's that's a really kind of clever way to do that. Um, yeah, I think that, that honestly might kind of just cover everything. I can't really think of anything I didn't talk about. Um, you know, it, like, at the end of the day, like, I guess the, the real questions that come around are... Like, how does this stack up against other twin-stick shooters? Because, you know, it's a pretty um, popular genre. You know, there are, there are a lot of twin-stick shooters out there. Personally, I think this is a really, really good one. I think I would put it up there with things like Super Stardust, which I know a lot of people hold in a very high regard. Um, I would honestly say that it feels pretty darn close to that, um, but put on, like, a flat surface, which makes it feel quite a bit different from Super Stardust. But yeah, I'd say it's kind of up there in terms of like how it plays aesthetically, you know, things like that. All those kind of qualities. It's, it's up there, I think. So 
that gives you kind of a good idea of the overall quality of it. Um, maybe I'll see if we can check out... Yeah. There we go. Oh, goodness. Um, you know, like, as far as how it performs, yeah, I have noticed, like, a little bit of slowdown, but it is an early access, so... Um, I'm sure that's stuff that's being worked on. Uh, typically, like you saw, like it, it gets pretty good again pretty fast. You just saw that kind of happen in real time, so... I guess that's a good indicator for that. So yeah, there we are. That uh, would be another level. So I think that is where we are going to end off. Um, you know, overall, I can pretty easily recommend this. If you're a fan of Tunistic Shooters, I think you will get a kick out of this one and definitely get your money's worth out of it. So, uh, as I said, there will be a link in the description straight to the Steam page so you can check this out for yourself. But with that, uh, feel free to comment if there's anything you would like to comment on. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos every single day. And if you... If you liked my video on Xenoraptor, then please do consider clicking the like button. But with that, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.